hid me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. For before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for him. Praise God. God bless all of you today, and uh, we're going to have prayer. Amen. And we're going to ask everybody to remain standing except your family unless they choose. And then, of course, we're going to have the Old Testament read by First Lady Kimberly McGee and the New Testament by First Lady Michelle Grissom, coming in that order. Pastor Swain now. God bless you this morning. Let's just give the Lord a big hand praise, everybody. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. Every eye closed, every head bowed. This morning, God, we thank you and we praise you this morning for all of your goodness. It's because of your goodness and your mercy that we have not been consumed. Because your compassion, it faileth not. And God, we thank you for all that you are and all that you do, God. We don't understand your ways. We don't understand your thoughts. But God, we know you're in control. God, you never make a mistake. And so, God, we give you praise and we give you glory on this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, I pray for this family, God. I pray, God, that you would lift every hung down head, that you would mend their broken hearts, God, and bottle up every tear. God, we thank you for this faithful woman, my God, that stood steadfast and she was unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we pray, God, that her labor, my God, has pressed her into the gates. Now, God, we pray because you are very present help even in the time of trouble, my God, even in the time of despair. God, you said you would be with us. You would not forsake us, but you would always be with us to the very ends of the world. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everyone said thank God and amen. 
Praise the Lord. Remain, remain standing for the scripture. Amen. <clears throat> Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works Bring her praise at the city gates. Amen. I've read Proverbs 31, 29 through 31. First Corinthians 15, verses 19 through 22 reads, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now in Christ, risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall we shall all be made alive. The word of the Lord is blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, I know that this is difficult for all of us because we all love Mother Barker. She has taken her time, her love, her her monies, glory to God, she has blessed all of us. Uh, and so we honor the Lord for a, a purpose-driven life. I said a purpose-driven life. I wish I had, I don't know, maybe about 50 folks to clap your hands and give God some praise. If it's more, it's all right. Come on, clap your hands and give God some glory for this life extremely well lived. I'm not sure if I see Missionary Bernice Bates. There you are. Glory to God. Missionary Bernice Bates is going to come and help us in a congregational song. And after she has completed that song, we're going to hear from Missionary Tiffany Nelson, Evangelist Sheila Ann Simpkins, First Lady of the Sweet Unity District, and her son, Louis Brown. Amen. First, given unto God to the bishop, this lovely wife, and she's here, Mother Hunt, to all the bishops, Bishop Noble, and all the elders, missionaries. I'm grateful to be here today. Uh, just gonna sing a song I prepared for the family and want you to pray for me. I love Mother Barker. I'm gonna just say two things about her she was a friend to me and she was a confidant, and I will miss her dearly. Pray for me. Oh, the land. 
God, brother. God bless everybody. Listen, before everybody, anybody else moves, I want to take a second to, first of all, thank God, but I want to thank God for our great leader who is with us today, the first assistant, presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J.W. Macklin. Come on and clap your hands for him. We honor the Lord for you, Bishop. Glory to God, and we thank God for, amen, uh, Pastor uh, Superintendent Albert Macklin IV, amen, who is the host pastor and allowed us all to be here today. Glory to God. And I know it's difficult, but, you know, we have, if anybody knew about the tradition of this church, Mother Barker did. Glory to God. And so we have praised God for this wonderful family. Thank God for, amen, the Sweet Unity District pastors who are here. Amen. Pastor Assistant Superintendent Pastor Leon Swindell. Pastor Tyron McGee. And pray for Pastor Kelly. He has a serious medical condition. He called me this morning. He's got a, he's been with the doctor now. Amen. Uh, but we're believing God for whatever's going on. I see the first, the supervisor of California Northern First, Mother Campbell. God bless you, Mother Campbell. Good to see you. Amen. And of course, district missionary, glory to God of Refreshing Springs, Church of God, uh, Refreshing Springs District, and Lady Sheila Simpkins. Amen. And first Lady of Sweet Unity District. To all of the pastors that are here, Meredith Pastor Waters, praise God. He was her pastor as well. Amen. And Elder Bennett, God bless you, and more. Listen, uh, you all forgive me. I'm just, y'all taught me this. Would you look at somebody and tell them right next to you, look at them and tell them, I needed you to sit next to me. I needed somebody to comfort, strengthen, and help me. Come on, tell them again. I needed you to sit next to me. I needed somebody close to comfort and strengthen me. Glory to God. Listen, I'll tell you what we do. Y'all help me do this. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Yeah, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, clap those hands. And there's no.
God. Come on, clap your hands. Encourage the person sitting next to you. Come on, give God some praise. Celebrate the life of this tremendously faithful woman of God. Ah, yeah, she lived a purpose-driven life. Amen. Glory to God. We honor the Lord for this wonderful family. I'm going to ask these to come in this order. Glory to God. Uh, Missionary Tiffany Nelson, First Lady Sheila Simpkins, and her son, Brother Lewis Brown. Come on, clap your hands for them as they come. now but she knew me when I was a little girl amen and, and when she asked me to serve as her assistant I was really proud and she and I had a little chuckle because neither one of us ever imagined that I would actually work alongside of such a wonderful woman amen and so I thought about all the different phone calls that we would have she would call me brother Lewis and tell me about the church of old and anybody who knew mother Barker knew she was the queen of protocol Oh, come on, y'all don't have to say nothing. But Mother Barker knew the protocol, and she wanted to make sure I was in line with what I was supposed to be doing. Amen. And so when I think about it, though, uh, some of the most important lessons that Mother Barker taught me were not through our conversations, but they were through her demonstration. Hallelujah. Amen. And a lot of people can quote Psalm 34 and 1, but my district missionary lived it out. Come on, Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My God, when my district missionary was sick, my God, she yet praised God. My God, when she felt good, she praised him. When her body was sick, she praised him. Oh, bless the name of God. for living the scripture out in front of me. My God, she lived out that passage in Job that said, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Hallelujah to God. My just missionary trusted God all the way to the end. My God, she was a phenomenal woman. Amen, just on a very natural level, she showed me what it meant to be pretty. My district missionary, she taught me that I didn't have to look like what I was going through. So if you remember her, she always had her hair laid. Come on, she always had on her Sunday best. My God, and she can walk into any room. She can walk into any room and be able to represent us well. And so I love district missionary uh, with all of my heart. I'm going to miss her. Amen. I'm so glad I still have all of you here because each of you carry a piece of Mother Barker. So God bless you and thank you for this time. God bless all of you. I know Sister Nelson had it together. She had it together. Uh, I don't have it so together, but I'm here. Sorry. I am so sorry. But nevertheless, nevertheless, I want to say that Mother Barker, thank you, was like a mother to me. I have been a first lady for 25 years, and she has walked with me every step of the way. So I can imagine how you guys feel really being in her family. She was just such a wonderful woman, so sweet. And uh, she knew what to say, when to say, and how to say. And one thing she taught me to do was to keep my mouth closed. Because I had like one little mouth that go like this, you know. But she taught me how to be quiet 
and just listen. So I thank God for her. I thank God for her family that's here. It is so wonderful to have such a big, loving family such as you. And I just want to say that Mother Barker was a, such a generous person. So generous. Yeah. I mean, we, we would have our, uh, our, our, our First Lady's appreciation, whatever appreciation. It, but it, it, she support everybody. I don't care who they were there to support them. Support her or not, she was there. That's the kind of woman was, amen? So I thank God for her faithfulness. And you know, even when she would have appreciation, it's her appreciation, right? We supposed to come and bring her things to do things for her. She would have gifts everywhere for us. I'm like, well, who appreciation is this? So she showed her appreciation right back to her, us. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing her with us all of these years, knowing the kind of woman that she was, so loving, so caring, so giving, and all those good jellies she used to make me, all that good food. And I'd be looking at her like, how you do all of that? But she did all of that, amen? So I just want to thank you again for sharing her and what a wonderful, wonderful, strong woman she was. How many times she held my hand? How many times she showed me how to behave? How many, like, like Sister Tiffany said, the way she dressed, her style, I had to step up a little bit, okay? Just to get it together. So I just thank God for her leadership. She would truly be, be blessed. But just know one thing for sure, God is in control. Amen. And you know, the other day I was sitting down. But the other day my grandson said to me, he said, Mama, he said, where does time go? Hmm. I looked, I said, baby, Mama don't know. You don't really think I know everything. You don't know that. Mm -mm, I don't. I said, well, I'm going to pray and ask the Lord, okay, maybe he'll give us an answer. But you guys be faithful to one another, love one another, encourage one another. Amen. And I just thank God for having this opportunity to speak on mother's behalf. God bless you all. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Let's give hand praise, please. Can you give God another hand praise? Come on now. Come on now. This is a difficult day, but my mother instilled in us to show up, you know, and to be decent human beings. She gave her heart, you know, she gave her time and her money to all of us. I would like for all of her grandchildren to stand up, please. Each one of them has, you're looking at my mother. She birthed into them everything that she could and to us. We're going to tell a story about my mother. My mother took us everywhere. She drove us everywhere. Vacations. She put us in the car and she drove us across the country, all the way to Canada, by herself. We went to church. I don't think we, we don't even have to go to church anymore, I told her the other day, because we went to church probably about seven days a week, 24-7. So yes, we do know the Lord, and we trust the Lord every day, that, because that's what she taught us. Um, I don't have many words to say um, right now, because my heart is broken, and if any of you have lost a mother, it takes time. But I appreciate all of you being here. I appreciate those of you who have come by the house, dropped off food, cards, money. Uh, we really appreciate it and we love you. Thank you. Listen, I, I, we just need a few folks. It don't take everybody, but we just need a few, few folks that would clap your hands and give God some glory. Just a few folks. As the Lonnie Faye Barker Memorial Choir begins to come, come this way, glory to God. And if you sing in any choir, in any church, 
Glory to God. Or if you've sang in any choir in any church, begin moving this way right about now. Glory to God. Come on, begin moving this way. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Come on. That's it. Y'all move this way. That's it. Glory to God. Y'all finna hear some singing right now. selection and then we're going to have the praise team come which has already been put together amen they're going to come and follow them with the selection is that all right celebrate the entrance of our supervisor of the NorCal Metropolitan Jurisdiction, Mother Gloria Hunt. The praise team is coming first. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We're just going to honor him with a few praise songs, and that means that everybody is singing. Amen? Amen. We're going to say something, you say it back to us. Oh, how wondrous is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together, and let's lift up the Lord in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank 
me that was me glory to god while i was praising god my thumb hit the off button look at somebody tell them the lord has blessed us in song yes indeed the praise team absolutely ministered to us while they were ministering to us auxiliary bishop joel nobles came in with his wife lovely wife lady joetta nobles amen and pastor john johnson came in glory to god and Good to see you all. Who did I mean? Oh, yeah, Dr. Murray came in. Glory to God. Glory to God. Did I? Oh, Dr. Hunt came in. Glory to God. Well, I just made him a doctor. He didn't go to school. That's my friend. Glory to God. Listen, uh, I want to follow this program and, and kind of do that. The praise team is going to come back. I do want to say to those of you who came to sing in the choir, thank you for sharing thank you for being uh, obedient and following that uh, there were some shifts in the program and we just need to I tell my wife all the time we got to assess and adjust amen that's where that go down listen uh, coming up next we want to hear from the uh, one of the administrative assistants to the NorCal Women's Department uh, administrative assistant Melissa Macklin Billingsley uh, who is a spiritual daughter and uh, the state supervisor of NorCal metropolitan jurisdiction that's none of the mother Gloria Hunt Glory to God. And then we're going to hear the resolutions. Amen. The resolutions. And then we'll come back to the praise team and they'll they'll come bless us one, one more again. All right. Look at somebody and tell them it's good to smile. Good. It's good to smile. Come on, missionary Bullsley. Can we just give the Lord a hand praise for a life well lived? Amen. We greet each of you in the name of the Lord. God bless our leader, amen, Bishop Mack and our supervisor. And to this family, I want us to just celebrate this family today. Will you join me in just putting your hands together for the Barker family? And I say that because four years ago, we sat, Lewis, right where you were. And what I learned is that we only have one mother. Come on. If your mom is still here, do what you got to do to take care of your mom. I'm going to say it again. Do what you have to do to take care of your mother. And so I applaud this family today. Amen. And I am not going to talk a long time because I'm already teary-eyed. But Mother Barker walked me through this process. Amen. I got ready to come to church about, I don't know, four months ago or so. And I called her. And she told me to come by the house. And she talked to me about, about how this would go. But she said, you my spiritual daughter, and whatever needs to be taken care of, you take care of it. And from that day, I made it my business to go by Mother Barker's house on my way to church. Mother Barker, what you need? She said to me, she said, I want to eat today. We had a fellowship in a fellowship hall, and I brought her some food, and 
My father taught me that when you're going through that, don't ever bring anybody a large plate. Mother Barker and them taught me that. So I brought a little plate in there and Mother Barker looked up at me. She said, Melissa, where's my food? <laughs> she was able to put her arms around my neck and I helped to lift her up, put her in the chair and brought it. Mother Barker tore that food up. But she said to me, every day is not going to be like this. She said, but it's going to be all right. And I'll never forget what she poured into me, amen, as a young woman, amen, receiving uh, an assignment and a jurisdiction. I came out of children's church. I wore tennis shoes to church. And when I got my assignment, the first thing I did, because my mother, amen, was ailing at that time, and my mother said to me, she said, Missy, you can do it because you have good examples. And I went to Mother Barker's house, and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. She said, a whole lot of us don't know what we're doing. She said, but if you follow God, you're going to be all right. And she taught me. She said, there's a lesson that I learned from your father. And she said, your father taught me as I served as his district missionary, as long as you love the people, God's going to take care of you. And she said, learn to love the people. I had a situation a couple of years ago, and I found myself on Raumar talking to Mother Barker. I got done talking to Mother Barker, looked at me, and she said, you're going to be all right. She said, love the people. <laughs> so I've learned to love the people, but I'm going to miss this woman of God because you don't have many examples left. And a young woman coming up in ministry, you need some examples. And we don't have many of that left. But it was my joy to serve her. It was my joy. I was so happy to be named a spiritual daughter. But she was so close to my mother and my father that one time my mother worked for her, amen, in the medical field caring Amen, for those that were on hospice, and we had a couple of laughs about that, but Mother Barker told me that wasn't my assignment. You're not ready for that. But I'm just so glad. I thank God for the relationship. I thank God for the love that I have for the mothers of this great church. Amen, and I love this woman, and she taught me so much, and I'll never forget. She was my, my, son, my sunshine band instructor. Amen, anybody was in Peninsula District, y'all remember going out to the park for vacation Bible school? She taught us how to make a church out of popsicle sticks and spray painted gold. Are we going way back? But I never forgot that. Now she loved life. She loved people. She loved young women, bringing them up, amen, in the fear of the Lord. And so we're going to miss her, love her so much, and God bless this family that is our family. We love you so much. Will you receive with me right now the supervisor of our great jurisdiction, Mother Gloria Hunt. God bless. Bless you. We honor the spirit of the Lord on today and to our leader, Bishop J.W. Macklin, and to all of the clergy, to all of the supervisors and first ladies, and to all of you, the people of God, to this beautiful, beautiful family of Mother Barker, who we love so very much. Mother Barker was a wonderful saint of God, and um, I worked with her in the licensing institute for the missionaries. She was the dean at that time, and I was an instructor, and we learned so much from her, and we will miss her. Mother Barker was faithful to whatever she was asked to do and to the people of God, and we loved her so very much. Um, as an instructor and a teacher, which she was, I just wanted to leave this with you on today. And it says, what can you learn from the death of a saint? Number one, life is a vapor. Two, spending time and energy on things that don't matter is foolish. Only what's done for Christ will last. All else is haste wood and stubble. Three, today may be the last day we have to do good. Nothing is guaranteed. Four, eternity is forever. Be prepared now for where you will spend your forever. God is not going to force himself on you. If you choose to live without God in life, he'll honor your wishes in death as well. When you live for Jesus Christ and faithfully serve him, which Mother Barker did, your life is never in vain. It's lived for something higher. It has a multi-generational outlook. One that says, see, my life pointed to someone more glorious than myself. Follow him. Whatever you're doing today, make sure you're doing life God's way and according to his will. Matthew 7 and 21 says, live life for his glory and for the love of those you are called to serve. And she was a servant. Do not withhold love from those around you. And Mother Barker didn't do that. She not only showed love in, in, um, 
in, in, in front of people, she showed love even when people were not looking. Don't waste time. Time is shorter than we think. The Bible says in Psalms 111, 116 and 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his people, of, of his faithful servant. And she was faithful to the end. We love her, we will miss her. Sleep on Mother Barker, take your rest. We'll see you in the morning. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Come on, clap your hands. Glory to God. Let's do this. Um, the program calls for all of us to read the obituary silently. Take a moment to reflect on the obituary and a summary of her life, after which missionary Dorothea Ivory will come and acknowledge the resolutions. Let me just say this before she comes, that she's going to read a couple of them, but she's just going to acknowledge the names of the rest. She can't read them all. Amen. Thank God there are too many to read. Amen. Praise God. has already been addressed. Family has selected some cards and we're going to read these cards. It says, with heartfelt sympathy in your loss. In times like these, there's so much we don't understand. So all that's really left is to hold on tight to the one who does. Praying for comfort and peace for each of you as God can give. Mother Jimmy Swindell. A lasting legacy. We celebrate the legacy and keep them close to our hearts and know through favorite memories we'll never be apart. Love Cynthia, family, and we love you. Let's give thanks for this good soul who touched the lives of so many. Open your faith in that will give you comfort as this time of grief. In deepest sympathy, love Janet and mom. Prayers of God's comfort and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. John 11, 25 and 26. May God's hope fill promises, bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart. To the Browns family and the Reagans family, with heartfelt sympathy. God bless you, Anita and family. Divine Memorial Baptist Church Resolution. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To the deacon, smothers, and family. Our hearts were indeed saddened by the passing of your beloved sister, Lonnie Faye Barker. Thus it is written solemn reflection that this message of sympathy is conveyed to you on the behalf of Pastor Blank and the officers and the full membership of the Vine ba Memorial Baptist Church. The death of a loved one is prepared one of the most trying time in our life. Death itself seems to be cruel and vicious, intruding into our lives and on our times. No matter when or how it comes, death takes us by surprise. 
It shatters our routines. It stops us in our tracks. And it forces us to face anew the reality of our own immortality. May the cherished memories of the joyful times with Lonnie Flay Barker provide some comfort in coming days and weeks. Know that your church family stand with you, outreach, arms, supporting you, and help you to go through this grieving process. Yet, there it all, we are reminded of the words of the scripture. To everything, there is a season, a time to be born and a time to die. How comforting it is to know that even in the midst of death, our lives and our times are in God's hand and he is in control. It is that the word, it is that the word of consolation which we offer today, surely our words will be inadequate to ease your grief and even the kind acts of friends will fall short but our prayers for you in the realization that God has ordained our lives and our lives will bring you some measures of peace may the comfort of friends and the presence of family the recollection of warm memories and most of all the spirit of God give you comfort and peace in your storm done this day the 17th of August by uh, William, I'm sorry, Vine Memorial Baptist Church. Amen. Pastor Reverend Randolph Banks. No matter what the trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He will go all the extremes. So if you cross, if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there for you. We, the members of NorCal Metropolitan, Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, wants the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid a Christian goodbye to a precious and vibrant woman district missionary Lonnie Faye Barker, the wife pastor of Emeritus Wesley Barker, mother to missionary Patricia Reagan Jeffrey of East Palo Alto of California, Louis Brown III of Artemis, California, Troy Brown of East Palo Alto, California, Charlene Dwayne Brown of East Palo Alto, of California and Keisha Brown of Pleasanton, California, sisters to twin brother Donald Smothers of Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, and Pamela, missionary Doris Jordan of Converse, Georgia, deaconess Vicki Smothers of East Palo Alto, and grandchildren of 10 and grandchildren, great grandchildren of 11, and a great great grandchild. Whereas Mother Barker was a revelant woman who loved the Lord and was a very independent person who would perform any task and instill in, the, in her family to follow her example. Whereas not only is this a loss of a devoted saint, but also a confident counselor and a closest of friend, a person who was always available to share an encouraging word and demonstrate strong support. Whereas in the passing of our beloved mother, there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart of agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave you or forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved to the family. We know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. But we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. When it all is over, we, we would like you to remember, in case there's a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem you would like for us to hear, in case there is a favor you would like us to do, we're here if you need us to help you to see you through. Done this 17th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2023. Bishop J.W. Macklin, First Assistant 
presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, jurisdictional prelate, evangelist Vanessa Macklin, first lady, mother Gloria D. Hunt, jurisdictional supervisor, and superintendent Gerald K. Simpkins, jurisdictional secretary. Amen. And, and as, as, as I said, that it was so many, it's so many uh, resolutions, and we will be giving this to the family. Amen. But I just want to make, make it be known that there was one. Um, we have some from the women's department from Mother Gloria Hunt, the women's department for NorCal. We have resolutions from Sweet Unity Bishop. Amen. And then we also have one coming from Glad Tidings Church of God in Christ. And then we also have one coming from Greater Robinson Memorial Church of God in Christ. Amen. And these uh, will be given to the family. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Missionary Ivory. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Listen, we're going to hear uh, from a couple of pastors who are very, very close to her. We're going to hear from uh, her pastor, her present pastor, the pastor Tyron McGee. Glory to God. And then we'll hear from a young man, glory to God, from Arizona who has been here almost as much. Glory to God. He's connected to all of the churches in Norca and uh, Sweet Unity District. Amen. So we're here from Pastor Tyron McGee and then Superintendent, amen, Daryl Grissom. Can we say praise the Lord? Can we say praise the Lord? Come on and give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want missionary Melissa to know that she not only had spiritual daughters, but she had spiritual sons too. Come on, where them spiritual sons at? Come on, come on. Glory be to God. Ah, oh, yes, praise be to God. I do honor my Lord and Savior for being saved and sanctified and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? God bless you. I do honor our bishop on today, the first assistant to the presiding bishop, none other than Bishop J.W. Macklin. I was super, amen, there you go, yes. Praise be to God, our supervisor of women, none other than saintly mother Gloria Hunt. Say amen for her. God bless you. I do give honor and respect to all these distinguished men and women of God that's here to celebrate this home going. Amen. God bless you. Praise be to God. I, I had to do my due diligence. I had to so like write something down because I couldn't just come up here off of memory. Are you with what I'm saying? And so I, I needed this opportunity to, to talk about Mother Barker because she, she lived such a saintly lifestyle, amen? So bear with me here. Mother Lonnie Barker, Mother Lonnie Faye Barker spent a great portion of her life saved and sanctified in this grand old church of God in Christ. Come on, somebody. Praise be to God. She's been under the pastorship of four pastors at Calvary Temple, at 1207 Jervis Avenue, that great city of where you're at now, East Palo Alto, California. And the late pastor, Leon Turner, emeritus pastor. Amen, amen, amen. She loved Pastor Turner, amen. Praise be to God. And Emeritus Pastor Wesley Parker, who is here with us today, her surviving husband. Amen. Whom well, they also had a church which was greater love. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Until he was called to retirement, and he recommended none other than our Emeritus Pastor Jerry Waters that's here today. Amen. God bless Pastor Waters which makes me the fifth pastor of Calvary Temple, but Mother Barker's fourth pastor. Did y'all get that? Because there was one before all of us, Pastor Dawson from Friendly Church of God in Christ, right there at 1207, praise be to God. Most of us in here probably know Mother Barker as someone that was advanced in her giving. Not just advanced, but very creative of supporting not just the church, but also the men of God 
from pies to making of needful things. Praise be to God. And there's a scripture out of the book of Colossians. I'm sorry, Galatians 6 and 9 that tells us. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Is that right? Well, Mother Barker served Calvary Temple Church. She served the Sweet Unity District. She served NorCal Metropolitan. She served even the National Church of God in Christ. And I know all of us had reaped something from what Mother Barker has done. Amen? And as I take my seat, I want to share this last story with you on her supporting the man of God. Is that all right? Well, I got appointed in October of 2021 as the new pastor of the church. And the pandemic protocol was still in place. But, you know, we was led to do some remodeling there and whatnot. And Mother Barker was excited like all the rest of the members. And Mother Barker said, Pastor, I want to help you. I said, all right, Mother Barker. She said, I think we should put a big screen TV on the wall. <laughs> I said, all right, we'll put a big screen TV on the wall, Mother Barker. She said, all right. She said, I'm going to help you, Pastor. And she said, uh, what you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to go over to Best Buy and price one for us. She said, all right, what you going to get? I said, the biggest one I could find. We wanted a big one, too. And so I went to Best Buy and priced it and everything. Come on, this is a great woman of God who supports the church, right? I go over there, and I said, I know Mother Park going to take care of me, you know, amen. So I'm looking, I see a 55-inch, I see a 65-inch. You know, they went from 400 to probably 600. And during the pandemic, ain't a whole lot of TVs being sold. But anyway, I priced one at $400. I was excited. A 55-inch smart TV had everything we needed. And I went back to Mother Barker. I said, Moms, I found one. She said, Great, son. How much it costs? I said, Mother, it's $400. She said, Really? $400? I said, Yeah. She said, Okay, you pay $200, and I'll pay $200. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. That's what I call advanced support. <laughs> when Mother Barker could no longer put in the work like we know her to do, she still kept doing what she could. Mother Barker didn't grow weary in well-doing, and she faint not. Because on the other side, she should reap. Hallelujah, her reward. God bless you. Greetings, grace, and blessings be to each of you in the wonderful name of Jesus to Bishop Macklin, Bishop Nobles, all of the clergy present, to Mother Hunt and to all of the honorable women of God. And then to members of the bereaved family. And to all of you who have gathered here today in this most sacred and solemn gathering. Who have lent your presence to decorate this occasion. I bless the Lord for Mother Lonnie. Barker. It was in the fall of 1987 that my wife and me, who at that time were two young and relatively new converts, we came to the Calvary Temple, a church of God in Christ. And there uh, we met Missionary Brown as well as others who embraced our presence. We learned who she was, not only from what she said, but what was said about her. Mother Mady Counts, her very, very dear mentor, who as 
I heard from her mouth and with my own ears sitting in this sanctuary during a district meeting. As Missionary Barker was about to go forth. My wife and I were seated beside Mother Counts. And Mother Counts said, she knew how to do it because I taught her. <laughs> At that time, we had but one child and were expecting another. It just so happened that Missionary Brown was engaged to marry about the same time, Elder Barker. When the baby was born and the marriage was made, uh, district missionary Barker and her husband became godparents to the child. And it was then Lewis, Troy, Dwayne, Keisha, we became official members of the Brown and Barker family. Since those days until recently, she set and maintained a standard for Christian feminine deportment. She was well-spoken, well-dressed, and well-mannered. Uh, she used the correct words, which means she said the right thing at the right time in the right way well-dressed, and that she gave attention to detail. And she delivered a message every time she entered the room. She was well-mannered in that she knew how to treat everybody right. And so I guess after saying all that has been said and that which is to come, since she was well-spoken, well-dressed, and well-mannered, all that's left is well-done. I told y'all he was. <laughs> Somebody shout, well done. Well done. Glory to God. Praise God. I am uh, most appreciative for the opportunity to stand here and facilitate this service. It has been an absolute honor. My wife talked about it a few minutes ago, but Mother Barker was our friend. She, some folks use friends so loosely. Some of y'all call folks that, got, that clicked on your Facebook friends. They ain't your friends. And if you read all they post about you, they'll let you know they ain't your friend. But Mother Barker was our friend. But real quickly, I, when I came in as the superintendent, she was already in place. She's the only district missionary that Sweet Uni Dis District has known. And when Bishop Macklin, at the request of Dad Macklin, appointed me as the superintendent, she welcomed me in and helped me out. And you know, you, you walk in like you know what you're doing, but you don't really know what you're doing. And those folks that love you, they know you don't know what you're doing, so they whisper what to do. Amen. And she was such a wonderful, wonderful friend. I do remember the first, 25 years ago, the first women's department, uh, women's weekend that we had. And my wife was the, the first lady, and so it was, she was over the women's department. And that was such a heavy task for my wife, because she didn't grow up in the church. She, she didn't grow up in this thing. She's, uh, but she was willing, and she gave her all. But that thing was heavy, and she began to cry, and Mother Barker showed up. And Mother, Grop Mother Barker held her hand and led her through that thing. And uh, I don't know how, I know my wife was happy, but I was really happy. She was so close to us. She'd make pie, buttermilk, <laughs> glory to God, gave us jelly. We got jelly in the refrigerator right now from Mother Barker, glory to God. She was an absolute faithful woman of God, many times driving to the meetings by herself just to be a faithful person in the office she was called to. 
So my life was enhanced by the relationship I had with Lonnie Faye Parker. I want to thank you, family, for allowing me to be a part of this family through Lonnie Barker. Clap your hands, everybody. In the interest of time, and I've got some time from the, uh, from the funeral home uh, where we have to be moving to, so I want to do that, and I want to absolutely give time for our eulogist today. So I'm going to ask, according to this program, that Superintendent Albert C. Macklin IV give us a sermonic selection. And after he has sang, the next voice you hear, and I would ask you to stand, everyone but the family, would you, unless you choose to, to stand and receive, again, what was stated, the first assistant presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ all over the world, and the prelate of the NorCal Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, and the pastor of the Glad Tidings International Church of God in Christ and our eulogist for today. I would like you to stand and clap your hands and receive Bishop J. W. Macklin. Thank you, Pastor. She would say, I've learned how to live holy. And I've learned, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned how to live right. Sickness, my 
headache, my heartache, my frustration, my anxiety, it will be over. When I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, when I Every day when I see Jesus, all my tears will be wiped away when I see Jesus. I'm gonna walk on streets of gold when I see Jesus. I'll give him all the praise when I Just so you know, it will never be over. God bless you. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and to be with the saints of God who have come from points far and near to celebrate the life of a true woman of God dedicated to the cause of Christ and someone that we loved who was easily entreated. If you knew her, you clap your hands. <laughs> to Pastor Albert Macklin, superintendent and host pastor of this church, to superintendent administrative assistant Simpkins, who's been our director of worship and celebration this morning, and to all of the saints of the Lord, all of these wonderful missionaries and mothers who are here. I'm going to ask all of our missionaries, please stand, all of you that are in the ranks of serving missionaries. And you look absolutely wonderful. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise for all of them. Praise the Lord. You look wonderful today having come to celebrate the life of, of Mother Barker. And to all of the ministers who are here, this is a um, special occasion to get this many pastors and ministers to come out on this occasion with their schedule and all, but I want all of the pastors and ministers, please stand here, and if there are any others that are here, please stand, remain standing for a moment. What a salute all by itself to have this many pastors and ministers that are here 
God bless you. Bless you, Elder Barker. So glad to see you as well. Come on, put your hands together again for all of them. I will not be long. Allow me just a moment of personal privilege to reflect on Brother Lonnie Barker and her relationship with us and the Macklin family in particular. Um, we've known her ever since I was a little boy. And that wasn't that long ago, but if you, if, if you count by tens. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I've known her, knew her growing up, and uh, watched her. She was a direct impact on this neighborhood, on our churches, on our families, and all of us that grew up here knew her well. And uh, for our family, it was a special connection. Her and my mom and Sister Swindell, they were just uh, well connected. God bless Mother Campbell. It's good to see her here as well. And we all grew up right here in EPA, East Palo Alto. Nairobi, power to the people. We all grew up right here. <laughs> Mother Hunt, it's so good to see you here today. Mother Barker loved you, and I know you, you loved her and appreciated her ministry as well. Um, just a little insight, Mother Barker was, uh, began, and I was here when this was happening. She first started out as the white, no, not white, the Sunshine Band president, serving under Mother Baines. And Mother Baines, eventually, she became the assistant sun, uh, district, but before that, she became the field representative for the district Sunday school, and my father was the district superintendent. I'm giving you some history you didn't know. When my father went from being the superintendent, uh, then I became the superintendent, probably the youngest on record to be the district Sunday school superintendent for the Peninsula District. Now I'm giving you some history now. And you know who my field representative was? Mother Lenny Barker. And so I can never tell my history without her. And if you think all of these others didn't know what they were doing, can you imagine what I was doing? But she covered me just the same, and uh, we worked together until things changed. And, uh, but I just wanted to leave that with you. And when this jurisdiction started uh, in Northwest, she was a faithful, faithful, faithful yes. district missionary. And uh, you can't tell the history of Northwest without talking about her as well. And then from there, if you look at it very carefully, even in the beginning days of uh, NorCal Metropolitan, she was so instrumental in helping us move forward and go forward. I think we ought to give her a great big God bless you. I was talking to Mother Lewis uh, just a couple of days ago, and I told her about her passing. Mother Lewis said, oh, I remember her. She was such a wonderful worker, and she just began to give her all kind of accolades from the National Church, and uh, that's the kind of impact that she had. Yes, and uh, we, will, we will miss her. We will always, always reflect. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand praise. <laughs> somebody said, well, it's over now. But would you look at somebody sitting next to you that looks friendly? And if they don't, don't fool with them. Just, just understand they're going through grief and they just can't deal with you right now but if they look all right just just look over at somebody that's near you and tell them you just need to know it's never gonna be over first John chapter 3 and I'm aware of our time I will not be long first John chapter 3 one verse beloved now beloved now now, now, are we the sons of God now? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. First Corinthians chapter Number um, 14, 
uh, verse uh, 15, I should say, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. But the 19th verse started by saying, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're all men most miserable. Just so you know, it'll never be over. May I say to all of us that are here today, that subject is good news for those that know the Lord. And bad news for those that don't. Because it will never, it'll never be over. How many funerals have we gone to when somebody said, well, it's over now. In fact, there's, there's a song that says it's over now. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news for somebody, but it will never be over. Somebody said, well, at least when they're dead, they're, they're gone. I got news for you. You ain't gone that far. Because it will never, it'll never be over. You will not disconnect from God. Because you don't believe in him. It will never be over. You may choose not to respond to him now. But it will never. It will never be over. You may say you don't believe in him. I'm not into religion. I don't believe in that. But it will never be over. Not believing in Christ is like not believing in gravity. Go to San Francisco to the pyramid building and jump off. Tell gravity you a lie. I don't believe in you. Gravity will make a believer out of you. But not only will gravity make a believer out of you, God is going to make a believer out of you. you. You may not believe in him now. But you're going to believe in him after a while. Somebody said, I'm not, I'm not of that faith. You're going to believe in him after a while. Because it will never, it will never be over. We understand from scripture that every man will stand before God. And give an account of all the deeds that have been done in his body. I don't care if you say, I've got amnesia, you're not going to have that much. You're going to stand before him. And even when you say, I, I don't remember, he's going to bring all things to your remembrance. Because it will never be over. I choose not to have eternal life, but the truth is, you are going to have it. The question is, where will you celebrate that life? Can I talk a little while, just for a moment? Because it will never It'll never be over. Well, I choose to be cremated. Still ain't going to be over. Can I talk to somebody today? God has so fixed it that he did not create us that we have an ending point. Yes, we're blessed. If you can live three scores and ten, we call that a really blessed life. But you don't have to live that long to know Jesus. And Jesus has worked it out in such a way that all of us have the opportunity to know him. Amen. Well, I wouldn't have that faith. It has appeared unto all of us. And all of us know that we live once, but we shall live again. Some of us will live where the weather is more preferable. Can I talk? I saw Superintendent Grisman who came in today and said to him and his wife, I know y'all glad to be up here rather than Arizona. It's warm in Arizona. Somebody said if you live in Arizona, it ought to remind you you want to go to heaven. 
But may I tell you, the other day we had the hottest day on history in the history of the world. It was hotter on this planet than it's ever been before. But that's only a drop in the bucket. Because if you think this is hot, don't miss heaven. Somebody said, well, at least I'll, it'll be over with in just a few moments. No, it will not be over. Because I don't want to use the wrong word and insult anybody. And so I don't want to talk about hell. Maybe I can find another word that's more appropriate. But I just want to tell you that it will never be over. The Lord will cause all of us to give an account. I was thinking about that early this morning, and I thought about what people would say to Jesus when we have to stand before him. I can hear it now. Uh, what happened was, and that is the beginning of excuses that we offer to try to explain why we did not receive him as Lord and Savior to explain and give somebody else a pointed finger and say, because of them, I, I, didn't, I didn't know you, Lord. Because of them, I didn't live saved. Because of them, I, I, that's why I didn't go to church. Because of them, that's why I didn't serve you. But many years ago, I made up my mind I was not going to give anybody veto power over my future. You can't let anybody stop you from the life that the Lord really wants you to live. Well, well, Bishop, you know, I'm not really into all of that. You need to get into it because you're going to stand before the Lord. What kind of funeral sermon is that? It's like this. You shall never outrun God. Hallelujah. So this passage of Scripture helps us. Let me say something on positive note. Beloved, now we are now the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be establishes the fact that God is and will always be. Always was, always is, and always be. Nobody can outrun him. Nobody can outlive him. Nobody can outmaneuver him. Nobody can outslick him. Nobody can do that. I am God. And beside me, there are no others. You're not bad enough to fight with God. Man, your arms are too short to box with him. Can I talk to you, somebody? We come into this world on our way out. We come into this world dying. I don't care how young you feel now. Keep on living. Dead Maxwell is going on now, but I can still remember him saying, boy, you can tell how old somebody is by the way they get in the car and the way they get out. God, I wish I felt like preaching a little while. The older you get, the longer it takes to get in. And if you have to back in, that's another story. <laughs> Amen, somebody. The very hairs on our head are named by God. But for some of us, he has less work to do keeping up with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Beloved, now we are... Uh-huh, the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, that is, that is the gospel because it establishes the fact that Jesus Christ is alive. Well, he did. He, he's alive. I admit to you that he died, but on the third day morning, he got up. And he has become the first fruit of those that slept. Hallelujah. Somebody said, but other people died, they got up. Yet there are a number of people in Scripture that talks about the fact that they live after they die. I admit that. I admit to you that Lazarus got up after he died. But then he died again. And didn't get up no more. Can I, can I talk to somebody today? The little girl, Jairus' daughter, my God, was dead, and they laughed at Jesus when he showed up, but she got up again. But then she died. Can, can I talk to somebody today? Glory to God. Let me tell you, the only one that got up again and never died again was Jesus. 
How do you know he's alive? Because he's on the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for the saints of God. He's there right now. Hallelujah. And when we pray to him, he's there next to the Father to make intercession on our behalf. So whatever you're involved in, whatever you've done, whatever your past, whatever your habit, whatever your hang-up, aren't you glad to know that he's there to bring you out? You will not go to heaven and say, Lord, I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't. You're going to know it because he's going to remind you that you were at Lenny Barker's funeral. You were there when that preacher from Hayward showed up and told you, it ain't never over. Hallelujah. You will not tell him, I didn't know it. I didn't know it was going to happen. You will know because you said you were there that day. And you heard the preacher say, it's never over. The same Jesus that got up is on the right hand side of the Father. How do you know he's there? Ask Stephen if he's there. Stephen will tell you that when I was dying, I looked up and Jesus stood up. Mm -hmm. He's still alive. No grave could hold him. And I got good news for you. In just a little while, there will be a cemetery salute when she's laid to rest. But can't no grave hold her body down. That's going to be a getting up morning because it's never over. If in this life only we have hope, how miserable we are. Cars wear out. Clothes wear out. Strength gives out. Friends run out. But if you don't have nobody else, you still have a friend in Jesus. Some friends, you can only call in the daytime. Some friends won't answer their phone after 6 o'clock. They'll see your name and still won't answer. But I'm so glad that I've got a friend named Jesus. And I can call him up in the morning, call him in the noonday, and call him late at night. Is there anybody here that has a friend named Jesus? He loved me so much that he understood my pain. He understands what I'm going through. I'm so glad that we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows the burdens. He knows the tears. And some are involved right now in things that you want to get out of. But he knows your pain. He knows your frustration. But if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall. Oh, yes. But it's never over with. So we're going to live our life. And it's appointed unto us a time to die. But let me tell you, my friends, it's only a temporary separation from the saints. Because the Bible helps us to understand that there's going to be a sound that the dead in Christ will hear that nobody else can hear. There's going to be a trumpet sound. You can't wake mother with an alarm clock. You can't wake mother by shaking her. You can't wake mother by giving her a shock and trying to shock her back around. But there is a trumpet sound. And when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ are going to rise from I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that the dead in Christ are going to get up. Those that remain are going to be caught up to meet him in the sky. Oh, my friends, it's never over. We will all stand before the Lord. Stand.
and give an account of the deeds that's done in our body. But there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. But sinners come and climb beneath and lose all the guilt and shame. Is there anybody here that want to go back with Jesus? Is there anybody here that want to be caught up to meet him in the air? There's going to be a day when we're going to be caught up. This whole world is not our home. This will never be over. I'll be over with my pain. It'll be over with my tears. It'll be over with all the disappointment. It'll be over with all the letdown. But I'm going to a place where joy will never end. I'm going to a place where peace will never end. I'm going to a place where I can live forever. I don't know about you, but I'd rather live there than live in another place. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Over there! Over there! Over there! There'll be joy! Over there! There'll be peace! Over there! We can walk the streets of gold over there. We have a mansion. We have a building not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. This body will go to the earth, but she will live in a new body. This old body is going to pull off this mortality, but a new body will put on new yes immortality don't you want to live forever don't you want to live in peace don't you want to live and the bible said we're going to receive an award he's going to give us a crown and the bible says that there's five crowns that are there but whatever crown i have I'm going to take my crown and lay it down at the feet of Jesus. And every day I shout glory, glory, glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody here? Let's have a little practice. Let's have a little practice. Come on and let's shout glory, glory, glory. Thank God I made it over. Thank God I live forever. Thank God somebody shout glory. Hey, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. But I've got a close. That's enough preaching. But don't let me close without leaving a closing note. While we're in heaven having a good time, think about the rich man that died. Mm -hmm. The poor man didn't even have a pallbearer. And so the Lord sent angels to bring him back and put him in the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man died. Your money won't keep you from dying. Your reputation won't keep you from dying. Your influence won't keep you from dying. And the Bible said when he died, he ended up in hell and looked up and saw Lazarus and said, Jesus, send Lazarus to come down and put a little water on his finger and cool my scorching tongue. The Lord
Lord said, no, there is a gap between you and him. You can't go to him and he can't go to you. Oh, glory to God. And he was burning. He said, send me back to tell my brothers, don't come here. He said, I can't do it. When you had good things, you treated him bad. But now he has good things and he can't come to you. But I want to tell my brothers, don't come to hell. It's hot down here. It's miserable down here. There's fire down here. There's brimstone down here. And the Lord said, I can't send you. But they have some prophets that are still there that will tell them, my brothers and sisters, I'm that prophet to tell you that Jesus is real. Eternity is long and hell is hot. Don't you want to go where Jesus is? Don't you want to go? Somebody lift your hand and say, yeah, yeah. I want to go to live with him forever and ever and ever. Because it's never, never, never over. Everybody stand, not enough. Everybody stand. Jesus Christ is the only door you can go through that will take you to heaven. The good news is he's given all of us a chance. This sermon this day will follow you through eternity. When you go home today, you're going to hear the preacher on your way home saying, it's never over. When you go to bed tonight and close your doors, put the locks on and turn your rock wilders loose you will still hear this word. In addition to your Netflix movie, you're going to hear this word. It's never over. It's never over. It's never over. And I hear the Lord saying, the day you hear my voice, I got a feeling Mother Barker would say, Bishop Macklin, she left word for me to preach her service. And when her daughter called me and said, Mama wanted you to preach her service, I said, yes, ma'am. Whatever I was doing, I said, cancel that out. I got to do this. I have an appointment. But I don't think she wanted me to preach her service and pat everybody on the back and say, yeah, everything all right. I got a feeling she wanted me to preach the gospel. <laughs> Amen, somebody. And you know why? Because she wants to see all of her family again. It ain't going to never be over, but you can see her again. But you can only see her again if Jesus Christ is your Lord. It's not about religion. It's about your salvation. Amen, somebody. And today, in just a moment, I'm going to give you a chance to raise your hand and say, Jesus, come into my life. Because I know it will never be over. And I want you in my heart. Because I want to see Mother Barker again. Wouldn't it be something if all of us could shout together? That everybody that's in this room, we could just decide to have a get together. Maybe about 5,000 years from now, let's all plan to get together in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. I need the first 5,000 years just to go around heaven and check out stuff. Hallelujah. I didn't have the privilege of living in a gated community down here, Brother Brown, but I'm going to live in a gated community up there. Amen, somebody. So let's all plan to get together up there. What do you say? Let's, let's make an appointment. 5,000 years from right now. Let's plan to get there. All right? I'll, 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 I'll meet you. Anybody else want to meet me? Now those that say, I don't want to meet you. I don't even want to go to heaven. 
You don't have to wave your hand. Just, I understand. Get your fan out. If you need Jesus today, everybody in this house, bow your head for just a moment. You can have no altar call. This is a funeral. Everybody bow your head. This is an altar call. Because it'll never be over. But the Lord is not going to hold me responsible for not preaching this gospel. And I sent you to preach the gospel that day at Mother Barker's funeral, and you didn't do it. Therefore, people left thinking they could just be through with me, but they're not. Lord, I don't have that testimony because I've told the truth. While your head's about, Lord Jesus, there are many who know you and are living for you expecting your soon return but there are others in this life only if we have hope what a sad situation but God there are many others today who have heard this gospel who would lift their hand and say I really do need Jesus Lord I ask right now that when I ask them to lift their hands they will lift them beyond the devil trying to hold them down that they will lift up their hands and say, Jesus, come into my life. I'm not asking what kind of sin they into because there is a fountain filled with blood. You'll handle everything. You'll handle the details if we would simply give us, give you our heart. Now, without any further delay, the question is, will you receive Jesus today? If you want Jesus in your heart today, would you just lift your hand right where you're standing? looking at hands going up all over this building. I'm looking at hands going up all over this building. Now let's pray with everybody. Say with me, Lord Jesus, here I am, and I need you right now. I've heard the gospel, and I know it will never be over. So Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins, of everything I've ever done. Take away every habit, every sin. Take it away right now. I want to live for you. Come on, tell him, I want to live for you. Come into my heart. Take control of my life. Turn me around and point me in the right direction. From this day forward, I'm yours, and you're mine. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, friends, you don't have to wait until Sunday. We can praise God right now. Hallelujah. As I go to my seat, may I encourage all of us that this coming Sunday morning, you find a spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled church where the preacher, where the preacher is not afraid to preach the gospel. You go to that preacher and tell him, I went to a revival this week. I mean, I went to a funeral this week. And I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And the preacher told me, to show up at church and tell you that I want to live for Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, I told you, it ain't going to never be over. Oh, one day, one day, oh, I'm going away. Jesus is one day, one day, oh, I'm going where Jesus is, one day, one day, oh, I'm going where Jesus is, I'll be caught up to meet him in the air, oh, one day, one day. Cheers! Yeah.
Oh, the saints of God. 
story How we overcome And we'll let the standing bit of my and Oh, man. 
And I'm so glad the world can't do me no harm.
I shall see his face, I, I shall, shall see his face. face. I, shall I shall see his face. face. When it's all over. Oh. 